Hi friends! Welcome to Organic True Crime where I talk about interesting true crime stories. This month I've been discussing poisoning cases and today I'm going to be talking about Giulia Tofana who claims to be responsible for the death of over 600 people in Italy in the 1600s. So Giulia Tofana was born in 1620 in Palermo, Italy. Um, not a whole lot is really known about her early life until when she was a young teenager, about 13 or 14, she lost both of her parents. So Julia's mother, Thofania Diamando, I'm so sorry if I said that really wrong. I'm sure I did. Anyway, she actually poisoned Julia's father. His name I couldn't find. Um, anyway, um, then Thofania was publicly hanged for her crime. And it's not really been proven or really known for sure, but it's said that before she was hanged, she passed on her recipe for poison to her daughter, Julia. And this is when Julia started moving around Italy a bit until she eventually settled in Rome. So in Rome, Julia established a makeup company and it was actually pretty successful. She ran it for over a decade. I'm not exactly sure how long, but she ran it for a long time. And eventually her daughter and some other local women worked for Julia at selling makeup. But they weren't just selling makeup. Julia's real success came from her very own invention, Aqua Tofana. So Aqua Tofana was at the time a completely independent indetectable or undetectable und poison it was clear it didn't have a taste or a smell and um in a post-mortem examination in the 1600s it couldn't really be found so aqua tofana was most commonly sold as a clear liquid that was disguised as a facial serum it came in like a little bottle and had directions on it like use once a night or something a few drops or whatever um, facial serum. It also sometimes came as a powder disguised as like a makeup powder, but the point of it was that you could set it on your makeup table or whatever and nobody would notice it and nobody would think anything of it. Sorry. Now, Julia was very careful. She only sold Aqua Tofana to someone who had been vouched for by either her customer or her employees or by previous customers. Um, she did try to check them out first. And I guess that's why she was able to get away with it for so long and sell it to so many people. But this is where it gets kind of fuzzy and people just kind of choose a narrative. So Julia is either viewed as a savior of women or as a serial killer. And personally, I kind of see it as a little bit of both because it's said that Aqua Tofana was only sold to women who had abusive husbands that were chosen for them and they were stuck in these marriages in a time when divorce didn't exist. Which I believe was true for the most part, but I do find it hard to believe that that was the case for over 600 people in like not that big of a time span, you know? I don't know. Anyway, because I do get that this is a time when arranged marriages were very common and when divorce was completely non-existent so women in an abusive situation wouldn't really have a choice but Julia was in her 30s when she got caught so it's not like she was running it for that long I so for it to be that large of a number it's just kind of hard anyway I'm going off on a tangent so these women would buy aqua tofana and then they would serve it to their husbands in a dose of once a night for about three to five nights and then he would die. Um, dose one would make them really sick and tired and usually this would be put into like their dinner or their wine or whatever at dinner. Um, so dose one would make them really sick and tired and then dose two they would start showing signs of a pretty serious stomach illness and then by three or four they were dead. And this went on for years without anybody really knowing or suspecting anything until one woman couldn't go through with it. One of Julia's customers purchased Aqua Tofana, took it home, put it in her husband's soup, served the soup to her husband, and then sat down and watched him. And as he was about to take his first bite, she said, no, 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 don't do it. He obviously then asked why. And she told him, she told him that she had poisoned him and he made her tell him, where the poison came from he took her to the police and made her tell the police where the poison came from and she told them it was julia tofana so julia was able to get a little bit of a head start i'm not really sure how but she was um and she took refuge in a church 
But it did take long for the townspeople to kind of change their minds about her and realizing that she was responsible for a lot of people's deaths. Um, so she was kicked out of the church and then arrested. So while in custody, Julia confessed to being responsible for over 600 deaths. Now, this confession was made after what was apparently very brutal torture, so it's kind of hard to say. And there weren't records of the sales of Aquatofana, and there weren't none of the deaths were questioned, so there weren't really records of that either. So it's kind of, it's pretty hard to say. Anyway, Julie was not the only one that was arrested. Um, her employees, her daughter, and also some of her previous customers were arrested as well. And um, in 1659, Julia, as well as some of these other women, were publicly hanged. The ones that weren't were either just sent to jail or banished. And that's it. I'm sorry that that was such a short one. It's from the 1600s, so there's not a whole lot of detail. It's mostly just a story at this point. And like I said, people tend to just kind of pick a narrative and tell it as like a Julia was this wonderful woman saving people and then she got caught or Julia was a serial killer who sold poison to people and let them kill people for her. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye.